shaytan, the one who take your father and your mother from the Jannah. Why he used the father and the mother? Because you see, my brother, if somebody tell her, listen, this guy, he has insulted your father. And this woman, she has insulted your mother. You will be friends with them. Can you imagine? No way. It's done. They are dead. I don't want to even look in their face. Allah says that enemy which you fall in step by step in this trap, he is the one who take your father and mother from Jannah. How dare you can still follow him? He give you the closest one. So Allah give this word. What was the word of Adam? Rabbana. He acknowledged. You sin, acknowledge your Lord. Rabbana. When you, when you acknowledge, you say, oh my Lord. Right away, automatically, you tell yourself, I'm a slave of him. You say, my teacher, right away you know you are his student. So he acknowledged. You have to acknowledge. And he said, I have wronged, we have wronged ourselves. Because if you don't know, you commit a sin, you cannot change. If I tell the brother, brother, can you ask forgiveness from the brothers? Can you ask forgiveness? You say, what? What I did to him. Which means you, acknowledge, you didn't acknowledge you did something. Therefore, you cannot ask forgiveness. So Adam, you say, I have wronged myself. Self-criticism. Don't say because of her. Ah, eh, Sheikh, you're right. I shouldn't listen to her. I was her friend and now... No, because of you. We always throw the, the blame to somebody. Because of her, I did this. Because of him, I did this. Because of them, I did this. Because of me. No, because of you. You forgot who you are. So, and Fusana, Allah, and then he acknowledged, say, if you do not forgive us, because who is forgiving? Only Allah, from his mercy. We are going to be a losers. So my brother, at least these two things take it from Ramadan. One is because our life is worship. And the second, our life is repentance. Which means you always, how, what we ask in Ramadan, what the Prophet says, man kama Ramadan, Whoever pray Ramadan with Iman and he's wishing to Allah forgive him. Wishing for Allah. Repentance. You actually tell you I'm repenting. So do the worship the same. Do the fasting the same. I will leave it right here. But uh, I have a new brother here who converted in Islam. Nicola. Right here. Can you raise your hand, Sheikh? Brother Nicola, this is you what? You, your third, fourth day? Yes. Yes. So tell me how do you feel? Tough question. No, no, you have to speak in the mic. And listen, I want every, especially the sister over there, I want you to tell us, this was your first Ramadan sister or second? Second. I want everybody to tell me from the sister who are converted, who have some Ramadan, how did they see Ramadan and what's changed in their life? And which advice they will give to the young brother who probably should fast Thursdays or Mondays? It's good to we share. Ah, brother Benjamin, you remember I told you, I want you to give me, he's also one of the brothers who's converted when he was in military, I think. Yes? So let's share a little bit. And I'm going to give first to brother uh, Nicolas, then I'm going to give it to the sister Christina, and then I'm going to give it to the brother Benjamin, and then we go here. Aliuska. <laughs> go ahead, Sheikh. Wahid, can you? Can you give it to yeah, the... Yeah, I give it. You want to say something, Sheikh, before? Okay, after. Oh, you got one? Mashallah. All right, Sheikh. Hello. You want to go right? Mashallah. Go ahead. Your mom is there. Ever since I became Muslim, I feel great. Nothing can be any better than me. Mashallah. I wake up every day feeling very thankful. Um, just to uh, you know, be alive and to um, have this song in my life. Nothing but thanks. Uh, to the creator. Welcome, brother. Sister Christina. Can everyone hear me? Yeah, thank you. Okay. Uh, so now I'm Don't try to do everything in like one day, first week, because you get overwhelmed. It's very easy. What I found is like there's an old you and there's a new you. And the new you is really fighting the old you to not go back to the things you've done. So take it very slow. With your prayers, 
really take that moment, take it in, like when you use Ramadan, like when I pray. One thing that has helped me is like really have your, and I could be incorrect, I'm sorry. So shake, defer to the shake, this is wrong. <laughs> um, but one thing that helps me is like really, I have my hand like over my heart kind of thing. And so you feel your heartbeat, you feel the way you're breathing. And for me, it really reminds me like, subhanAllah, like you're alive. Like your heart beats without, you haven't helped you anything. And so for me, it makes me really wrapped in the moment of like, okay, I'm praying. It's about me and Allah. Whatever I did before doesn't matter. So I would just say, take it slow, be intentional. Default to the shakes, because <laughs> I'll always text Shake up and like, hey, that I read this thing in the newspaper. It's true. And he's like, Christina, stop reading that. Um, <laughs> so yeah, just take it slow, default to the shakes, and just don't be hard on yourself. We all fall short of the glory of Allah. It's just natural for human beings. But every single time you fall, um, I think it was Shake that told me, um, the guilt you feel in your heart when you make a mistake is the mercy of Allah. Because That's true. you still care. The day when you sin and you don't care, that is when you're truly lost. But if you fall short and you, you feel in your heart that guilt of like, subhanAllah, I really did this again, Allah will forgive you, inshallah. And then one thing someone else told me is like, if you take one step towards Allah, Allah comes running to you. MashaAllah. So maybe you're not praying every day and you're like, wait, it's there, then who? Who are you? But if you don't pray, you're not Like, any small thing you do, and Allah will open doors. Like, truly, I've been Muslim for years, shaped through there, always again. <laughs> but just take it slow. Really be intentional and like give yourself grace and mercy and Allah gives you grace and mercy every day. Mashallah. Mm -hmm. Mashallah, sister. May Allah reward you. Short and clear, mashallah. Mashallah. Go ahead, brother Benjamin. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, my name is Jatulio Benjamin Gonzalez. I've been a uh, Muslim since 2009, I think. Uh, the, the chef knows I'm not very like super Muslim. <laughs> That's good one. I try to keep things practical. You know, uh, so super Muslim. Prayers, but I really focus on uh, asana. You know, I, I believe that while we're here, we, we gotta, uh, you know, we do dawah through action. You know, um, I, I'm I'm not a chef or an imam, so I'm not there to proselytize or convert anybody. That, that's their job. <laughs> so, you know, I, I, I try to live as a Muslim every day by, by doing good deeds um, and, and abstaining from as much sin as I can. Of course, I'm not perfect. I'm not super Muslim anymore. So, you know, that, that's pretty much it. You know, and I'm coming here to, to the masjid or I go to the masjid as often as I can to learn from the chef. Mashallah. Um, you know, speak Arabic and, and uh, eventually learn yeah, you're doing very good, Mashallah. You're doing very good. Even though you missed the last class, but you're doing good. <laughs> no time, I'm protest. I see. <laughs> yeah, yeah, give it to the sister. No, no, anybody who wants to talk, please take your role. Okay, take your turn. Start with worshiping like with the belief system of like, wow, God is actually out there. Let me like change my life. Let me be kinder. Don't think too much about, am I doing this wrong? Am I doing this wrong? Start slowly because everything wants to be easy to you. And like always on your free time, like don't listen to music. I know it's hard, but like listen to lecture or something. Like do something that you're going to like learn off of that's going to benefit you. And then slowly like the acts of worship is going to come naturally and it's going to like, it's just going to manifest your life and it's going to be easy. So don't stress yourself out too much, because I know it could be stressful. So. Mashallah. Thank you. Who is next? No. Uh, let me ask a question. Do we have anybody who is not Muslim here? Mashallah. Yeah, they are our guests. That's very good. Do you have any question about Islam or about uh, anything which bothers in you? Um, I'm Seventh-day Adventist, so my sister and I, um, and Christina, she invited us, my younger sister. Very good. Um, I think it's really great that she is um, following her path, and she's following her religion, and we want to support her and learn, because I think um, when you don't ask questions, then it opens room for interpretation. That's, and that's so true. I, I come today to really learn more, and... 
helping us understand that we want to respect her. She respects us. So That's good. No questions at this point. That's good. Now, do you have, did the sister Christina give you Quran? No, That's it. Have seen it. <laughs> really? Wow. Yeah. Baby steps. Baby steps. No, sis, sister, you see, uh, like I said, that the biggest enemy for a human being is the, to become ignorant about something. And that ignorance bring, brings fear. When you see somebody and you don't know who that person is, you start getting fear. And when the fear produces that arrogancy, so I better attack him before they attack me. This is all the lack of knowledge. And that's why in book of Isaiah, God says, let us reason together. So you have to reason together. You have to know. To get to know your neighbor. Because you see, one of the, of the commandments in book of Exodus, chapter 9, it says, do not testify false against your neighbor. Then how do I testify false against my neighbor when I don't know nothing about my neighbor? I talk about my neighbor what I heard in CNN or Fox News. And your neighbor is just across the street, right there. You're just knocking in the door and say, can I ask you who you are and what do you believe? Now, you see, the problem is, sister, you know how many Muslims we have in America? At least 10 million Muslims. In the whole world is 1.8 billion Muslims. Now, among these people, they are engineers, doctors, uh, smart, shepherds, cleaner. Any kind of, you know, you're looking for is there. So now... 1.8 billion people, they believe in something called holy book for them, Quran. Now, if I ask you how many of the novels or romans you read, well, they are fiction like Harry Potter or this. You see, I, I read a lot when I was in school and this. And you know they are fiction, but you read it for entertainment. Now, you have a book which at least 1.8 billion people believe is the divine book from the creator. Now, you own it to yourself to read it. Not because you have to believe what is in there. He said, but at least I, I know my friend what he believes. I know my neighbor what he believes. So you can educate yourself. Because if I ask you, what do you know about the Chinese? Huh? He said, Chinese, they have blue eyes, blonde hair. They eat pizza. They speak Italian. You look at me like, what are you talking about? Chinese? Blue eyes and blonde hair? Why? Because you will be, you look weird to me. Why? Because 25% of population in this world, they are Chinese. And you don't know nothing about them. Guess what? 25% of population of this world, they are Muslims. And you don't know nothing about them. You let the Fox News to tell you. So that's why I, we say, let's reason together. At least we, we can agree to disagree. We don't have to agree for everything, but we can agree to say, say, I know where you're coming from. And I know which, from where you're coming from. So that is the best way. And believe me, if we get this, then you will see that the society will change. There is a word called in the Talmud, in Hebrew, takun alem. They say, let us repair the world. I don't know how to repair the world. It's too big for me. But I know how to repair myself. How to repair my neighbor how to repair my family. So if we repair each other, then we have a healthy society, healthy family, health friend, healthy friendship, and that's come through, through the knowledge. So you own it to yourself to get a Quran. And before you leave, and then go get Sheikh two of them, please, give it to the sisters and the other books, because they, they will forget. And uh, they, we cannot let that thing happen. So you, you read it for yourself. And you see what the Quran says, because most of the people, sisters, they don't know what the Muslim believe about Jesus Christ. What do you think the Muslim believe about Jesus Christ? What do you think Muslim believe about Jesus? Did ever you ever ask this question? What do you think we believe about Jesus? Of course, we don't believe what you believe, but what do you think we believe? Is this a rhetorical question? Yeah, I'm asking. What do you think the Muslim? They consider Jesus Christ to be. Okay, so you want to answer? Give you a response. Yeah. Do you know any? Um, I can't really say what I uh, what the Muslim believe in Jesus because I don't know. That is true. You see, we the Jesus Christ sister is mentioned in Quran in our book twenty five times by his name, Jesus the son of Mary Messiah, Christ in Greek. 
25 times. The name of Prophet Muhammad, you know how many times is mentioned in Quran? Only four times. His opponent, Jesus Christ, is mentioned 25 times. The one who supposed, because that's what the non-Muslims say, he wrote the book. He mentioned his name only four times. And we know all we agree, all we agree, and I know you sure agree, the Prophet Muhammad, he was Arab. We know that. Forget about he was a prophet or not, but he was Arab. Yes? Anybody has, says he was from Europe? He was Arab. And the people he came through, they are all Arabs. So now he is going to these people and tell them he is the messenger of God. And he tells them, listen, do you remember that Jesus, the Jewish, Jewish man from Beit Laham 500 years ago? Yes. He is the chosen man of God. He is the mighty messenger of God. He is Messiah. His birth was miraculous with no man intervention. He was doing many, many miracles. He was healing the blind and the lepers with God's permission. He was giving life to the dead with God's permission. He protected his mother's uh, honor when he was a babe, when he spoke in a cradle. And he was kind to his mother and he was kind to his people. You think the Arabs will take this to believe? Because this Arab man, he's praising the Jewish man more than he would he praise his own people. I mean, when you run for president, when one day Christina will do that, or Benjamin, usually you give prom promises to your people. It's, I will reduce the taxes, I will be this to you, I will do this to you, so they can vote for you. But this man, Prophet Muhammad, he goes to the Arab, and he's praising the Jewish man, not Arab man, and he's telling them, you remember his mother, who is the mother of Jesus? Mary. In, we have the whole chapter in Quran, in that book, the chapter 19 is called chapter of Mary. All chapter is dedicated to Mary, the mother of Jesus Christ. How honored she was. And in chapter 3, talking about the whole family of Mary. Not just Mary, even his uncle and all the family, the lineage of Mary. And in there, in ayah, verse 42, God says, Ya Maryamu, inna Allah istafaki wa tahharaki. O Mary, Allah has chosen you and purified you and chosen you as the best woman above the woman of the all nations. This is in Quran. If I read it to you, you will think this is in the Bible. In Quran, God tells to all of us and to Prophet Muhammad because this Mary is the chosen woman, not among the Jewish. Among the whole women of the nations. Now imagine the Prophet Muhammad, he's telling them to the Arabs. That Jewish lady, she's better than your wife. She's better than my wife and my daughter. And the whole woman of the nations. You think the Arabs will, be, will take that, will buy? They didn't. That's why they tried to kill him. That's why he migrated. But why he has to go out of his way and please and praise the opponent, which is his mother, you know, in Quran, we don't have a chapter of Aisha, which is the wife of the Prophet. Or we don't have chapter of Fatima, which is the daughter of the Prophet. Or we don't have chapter of Amina, which is the mother of the Prophet. But we do have chapter of Mary, the Jewish lady who was the mother of Jesus Christ, the son, son of Mary, Messiah. Why he has to do that? I told all the time to my brothers, Christian, account for that. Why this Arab man has to go out of his way and please the opponent and waiting from the Arabs to believe he is the messenger of God. He's supposed to praise them and give them a credit and their wives and their daughters. Why he has to do that? Because Jesus told us he will not speak from himself. But whatever he hear, he shall speak. And he will tell the things to come. And he will glorify me. What is the attribute of that person? He said he will not speak from himself. Who is that person? We say, we say, this I'm talking about the Muslim perspective. That person who is eight masculine pronoun of the third person, what Jesus mentioned in John chapter 16. Beloved, I have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When he, the spirit of truth will come, he will guide you to the all truth. And he will not speak from himself. But whatever he hear, hear from whom? 
from somebody who has authority to give orders. He shall speak and he will tell the things to come and he will glorify me. Eight muscular pronoun of he, he, him. Who is this he? The spirit of truth. What is his qualities? He cannot be God because God doesn't need to hear from God. But the God, Jesus said he will not speak from himself. Which means he is the, not the Holy Spirit because Holy Spirit according to Christianity is God. One of the Trinity. God is Almighty, the Father is Almighty, the Son is Almighty, and the Holy Spirit the Almighty. The Father is God, and the Son is God, and the Holy Spirit is God. But there are not three God, but one God. That's how the Catechism is. So Jesus said he is not God because he will not speak from himself. But whatever he hears, from who? From Revelation. And what we, his quality will be, he will guide you to the all truth. Which means the all truth wasn't with Jesus. Because otherwise it doesn't make no sense when Jesus says he will guide you to the whole truth. He said, I have a lot to say, but you cannot bear them now. What means the, the whole truth is not yet to come. It's not with me, it's yet to come. Because that's why he said all truth. What means all mean all. And how the all truth can be if it's not tangible, touchable, if it's not a book. If somebody says, I have heard voices, that voices. The Jehovah Witness, they heard voices. Mormons, they heard voices. Catholics, they heard voices. Protestants, they heard voices. And they're all claiming that voice could be Holy Spirit. But how many Holy Spirit we have? Because everybody hears the voices and they are not the same voices. Because they don't believe the same thing. So the voice could be devil, could be angel, could be... But it's voice, we cannot be touched. We cannot be conformed. But the only way to be the old truth must be something which you can test it. You say, okay, this is the old truth, I will put it in test. And the only book, God says, only book, which put the challenge, you will not find in the Bible, which put challenge to test is the Quran. He say, look, if this book you think is not from God, then try to look on it and see if you can find contradiction. Who said that? Quran. So he given us a test. He say, anything you want to look for it, here we go. The book is in front. See if you can find the contradiction. The only book who claim that this challenge is the Quran. There no human being can write, write a book and want the people to believe, to believe in that book. And then he challenged them. He said, listen, whatever you see in the book, try to find contradiction. Because who can claim because his knowledge is superior about the all knowledge of the people? Everybody has a limit. So that's why, since I want you to think about it, why this man, Arab, has to put, praise Jesus as a Messiah and praise the Mary, the mother, as the best woman of the nation. And he was sent to the Arabs because that he will not speak from himself. And that's what I, we say. This truth, spiritual truth, is the Prophet Muhammad. Because Jesus Christ tells us the spiritual truth equals the true prophet. Who says so? Jesus in first apostle of John, first apostle of John chapter 4, he said, Beloved, don't believe every spirit. Many false prophets will be among you. Spirit, he starts with the spirit and they say many false prophets. He said, the spirit which confess I am a Christ, the Christ, the Messiah, he is the true prophet. So look how Jesus put the test. He said, the true spirit equals, equals true prophet. False spirit means false prophet. How do I know the true prophet? Jesus told me. He said, if he confess, I am Christ, I am the Messiah, Christ, he is the true prophet. Guess what? The only religion in the face of the earth today, sister, besides Judaism, Hinduism, none of them believe Jesus is the Messiah. The only non-Christian religion today who make article of belief, you cannot become a Muslim if you believe in Muhammad without Jesus. You believe in Muhammad Jesus without Moses. Or you believe Jesus Moses without Muhammad. You have to take the whole package. Take it all or leave it all. The only religion in the face who make article of belief to believe Jesus Christ is the Messiah. Ascended by God is Islam. That's it. It's Islam. Christianity, of course, they have to believe in that. So Jesus said, if he believe I am the Christ, Messiah, he is the true prophet. So Prophet Muhammad believed he is the Messiah, he is the true prophet. Moreover, he honored him so hard, so much, what you see his name is all over in Quran and his mother. 
But most of the people, they don't know Muslims believe in this. Shaykh, and that's why, yes? I don't mean to interrupt you. Now oh, you have something to add. Give it to her. We ha there is one here. I just want to tell you that there are two non-Muslim here, Mia's parents. I don't know if they have any questions also. You know Mia, right? You remember her? <laughs> Maybe when I saw her, she didn't have hijab. Okay. Do you have any questions, sisters? Yeah. Oh, brother. Oh, the, oh, si oh. Did they understand my English? Because broken English, you know what I'm talking about. I learned it from the ghetto way. <laughs> okay. Sister, any question? Any question? Come on, guys. This is your day. The food is here, by the way. Don't worry. The food is there. I was trying to drag it so the sister can finish the job. So, any questions, sisters? The two sisters. Uh, oh, my name is Francia. Francia. My name is Marianne. Um, Marianne? Marianne. 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 Close to Marianne, huh? yeah. mashallah. <laughs> so that's good. So, so far I said to you about the, what we believe. It makes sense to you? I think it's been great hearing a lot of uh, what you've been saying and some of the comparisons you're making. Uh, and I think that it'll be important for me to read so that I can yep. formulate some new questions. Masha, good. So hopefully when we see you next time, you have a whole bunch of questions. Okay. Like I said, sister, any question? Listen, I don't want you to be like uh, polite with me and politically, politically correct. No, no, correct. any question you have. What's bothering you? Yeah, because you hear a lot of stuff, you know, and there's something is bothering you. If I, if I ask him, maybe I will hurt his feeling. No, 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 no. I'm like an apple tree. You throw me stone, I give you apple. Don't worry. Because that's how we learn. Now, I cannot blame you when you ask this kind of tough question because everybody is programmed some way. And when you see something, you get programmed. They say, wait a minute. I need to ask somebody. And I say, when you, when you go to meet to a sheikh, I, I look a little bit scary. He say, no, this guy is too scary. I don't want to ask him a question. And you keep it for the rest of your life. And that maybe that question could be the key to you join our family. You never know. Well, then, now that you have asked, uh, I guess my question at this point is, um, so once a person converts to Muslim, yes? Reverse. Yes. Islam, thank you. So mm -hmm. once a, a non-believer converts to Islam, how long do they, is there a transition period or are they automatically considered part of your family? Automatically, sister, we have a VIP visa. <laughs> we don't have a pool to put you in, but I will add to the Sheikh a little bit to elaborate on this. Go ahead, Sheikh, now, because... So, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alayhi. Very good question uh, from the sister. And uh, that's uh, actually one of the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with a simple word tells you that how simple is the belief of a Muslim. With simple word by saying, I bear witness that there is no God worthy of worship except Allah Almighty alone. And I bear witness that Muhammad, peace be upon him, is his slave and messenger. That's, that, that's it. You become a Muslim. And at that very moment, just that very moment, you are considered a part of this big family, 1.8 billion Muslims all around the world. And that very moment, as the Sheikh said, we don't have, we have water, but we don't baptize. But this is the, the moment that all of your sins are forgiven because of this word that actually should come from your heart as a belief, not only merely by word. At that moment, all of your sins, previous sins are forgiven. and. In that moment, another blessing and glad tidings Allah gives subhanahu wa ta'ala in the very first moment that not only your sins are forgiven, but actually they are returned, are replaced with good deeds. All of your sins. Imagine how vast is the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that very moment, you not become only a part of that, but you are better than us. Why you are better than us? Because you are sinless in that moment. All their sins are forgiven, so that's why we usually we ask our brothers and sisters who accept Islam to supplicate, to make dua to Allah for us, to ask Allah to forgive our sins, because all of us are sinners. Don't think that the preacher or the imam are sinless. We are, nobody is sinless. 
everyone is, uh, is a sinner, but the best of the sinners is the one who repents a lot. As the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said. And actually, yesterday was another sister, mashallah, and she accepted Islam and came. And actually, yesterday was a really uh, a beautiful day here in, in the masjid and tells us that how the life of a Muslim revolves around the place, like the masjid, place of prostration, place of worshiping. And we as Muslims, we are not that just like we come to the masjid or we, once a week or to, even five, the, uh, five days a week or something like that because our life as a Muslim revolves around connecting your heart to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as a Muslim you are the one who submits your will and your life to Allah azza wa jal. as a Muslim you do that sincerely with pure faith as a Muslim because you do that you achieve peace in your heart and comfort these all three are the meanings of the word Islam in Arabic all these three so that when you establish that connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then you're going to achieve that peace in your heart. And because of that, we are not supposed to be selfish. Like, you know, the Jewish, they don't want others to become Jewish. We want others to share with us what we think that is a treasure. That treasure that we're becoming submitting ourselves to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's why, coming back to the yesterday, that our life, is always should be connected with Allah Azza wa Jalla. While we, we woke up, the moment the men, men, Shaykh mentioned, we say some du'as or supplication. Then we pray, then we, even we go to work. When you come out of our house, anything. We, we have weddings. Yesterday we had a brother and a sister, they had their nikah, the, the contract, not the wedding. Okay? So they, they came. Then we had a funeral. SubhanAllah, may Allah have mercy on, uh, on the, the brother who passed away, who was the one of, who established uh, and and, and uh, wor worked a lot about Islam here in, in America. May Allah have, forgive him. So then I had another, and the sister came and accepted Islam. And then we had an, an, a wedding. So all of these four, if I can think of, I can tell like SubhanAllah, the, these two uh, couple or the couple, they started a new life. And where they come from? They came to the masjid, the mosque, to, be, to have the contract of, of the marriage. Then the other brother, he passed away. But again, the same thing, he started a new life for the hereafter. He passed from this world life. Then the, we had the sister, as the, she started a new life in Islam. He came to, she came to the masjid. And then the, the couple, the other couple that had the wedding, alhamdulillah. So they started a new life together. So the Muslim, uh, being a Muslim and accepting Islam is so easy and you become a part of that. But for the short, this life, the Islam is a way of life. It's not just merely saying the words and you have to do nothing. No, it's a way of life. You, the way of life that you live according to the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and what He wants from you. Jazakallah khair. So inshallah, sister, let's enjoy your meal and uh, you, we, can, we can sit and still chat. I will be in the corner here if somebody has a question. but. I want you guys to start eating because uh, it looks like we're fasting today. <laughs> well, I want you guys for being here. Thank you for being here. Thank you, sister, for being here. Thank you. I hope we'll see you again, Isha. Every month we have this gathering. Every month, the last Sunday of every month, we have this gathering. And it's good to come and break the bread together and share some thoughts and learn. And that's all, all we want. We just want to learn and understand each other. May Allah you guys reward you, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. So, Sister Aliuska, I forgot about her. She has kids. <laughs>